Hello and welcome to the agenda. I am Ajay Kaul. In this program today, we will talk about a U.S. State Department report which highlights human rights violations in Pakistan. The U.S. in a report has castigated Pakistan for arbitrary killings and disappearances of Pashtuns, Sindhis and Baloch human rights activists. The report of the U.S. State Department speci specifically mentions that Pakistani security forces are responsible for disappearance of people, including human rights activists, politicians and teachers also. The report is a chilling reminder about gross human rights violations in Pakistan and we will deliberate on this issue in the agenda today. We have with us retired Major General Rajan Kochar and geopolitical expert Mr. Jitendra Kumar Oja. But before we begin our conversation, have a look at this small report. Pakistan has been slammed in a report of the U.S. State Department for gross human rights violation being carried out by the state agencies and others, especially in Balochistan, Sindh and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. The 2020 Country Report on Human Rights released by the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken mentions arbitrary killing and disappearance of Pashtun, Sindhi and Baloch human rights activists. Referring to Balochistan, the report says, security forces in Balochistan continue to disappear pre-trail suspects along with human rights activists, politicians and teachers. The Baloch human rights organization noted 45 individuals had disappeared and that assailants had killed 15 persons in seven districts in July alone. The report adds that violations in Balochistan also include attempts to control or block websites that advocated Baloch independence and that the government used surveillance software. Talking about Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, it expressed dismay at the fact that authorities have power to detain civilians indefinitely without charge in internment camps, occupy property, conduct operations and convict detainees in the province. The U.S. Human Rights Report talked about the intimidation of Pakistan's media. It said threats, harassment and violence against journalists who reported on sensitive issues such as civil military tension or abuses by security forces occurred with increasing frequency during the year. It noted that the government has not done anything to alleviate the situation for media organizations. It said both the military through the Director General of the Inter-Service Public Relations and government oversight bodies such as Pakistan Electronic Media Regulatory Authority enforce censorship. So when the Pakistani media is not free to report independently, the truth will remain suppressed to a large extent. Peer report. Well, let's welcome our guests, Major General Kochar and Mr. Oja. Welcome to the program, both of you, sir. Thank so, you. Let me begin by going to Mr. Oja about the U.S. State Department report, which you must have seen, which highlights the gross human rights violations carried out by Pakistani security agencies in Balochistan, Sin, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. So, what will you say on this? There is absolutely nothing new about it, Ajayji, not only this report, but even Human Rights Watch has been highlighting. For n number of years, I have been reading Human Rights Commission of Pakistan's report and local NGOs also, they have been uh, highlighting this thing. For all practical purposes, no fair criminal justice system has ever existed in Pakistan throughout this thing. For a long time, you know, West tried to cover up these uh, successive rogue regimes, I would say, and this uh, military control, civilian governments or direct military rule. For some reason or the other, you know, we have always discussed how West had perceived Pakistan as a tool, not as an ally, but as a tool to promote their strategic interest in this region. And that was containment of Soviet Russia. And of course, later on, you know, they, they, they went around uh, and they joined this global war on terror. But for all practical purposes, you see, there is no independent judiciary. There is no free media. There is no civilian government. So under these circumstances, you people who are uh, running that country, within the military uniform, they, unrestrained by anyone, the slightest of dissent from any section comes, the, uh, the response is retribution, revenge and killing. And who are their free allies? 
these radical groups. So there is absolutely nothing uh, new in this report. You also go through report of Human Rights Watch also. 2021 report, there's severe indictment of Pakistan. And this is a very stark reminder, this kind of state, this kind of territory with complete lawlessness and only force that operates is military and that military cannot be checked. What would be plight of civilian population? They are right. living under oppression and they have what they've done. They have fed the poison of Islamism to such an extent that hatred for India and hatred for Hindus is the only thing. Imran Khan, you see what he has done? moment he tries to ease pressure on Pakistan by getting some sugar and this thing. Not for us, for his people, he has been branded as Gaddar and uh, all those things. So I think this is a very dangerous kind of territory which is there existing right in our neighborhood. Human right is one aspect, but I feel that for all practical purposes, that area is becoming increasingly governable, ungovernable and unsafe for everyone. Right. So I'll go to Major General Kocha. Major General, as you heard about the military aspect, of it, as uh, Mr. Uh, Oja highlighted, as a military man, so how do you feel when a military, I mean, goes rogue, like in Pakistan? You see, uh, the military is a rogue, it shows that there is no governance in the state. Recently, I was hearing an interview of the Chief Minister of Balistan, Jam Kamal Khan. He very clearly stated in his interview that large areas of Balistan have no connectivity with their mainland. Right. So security forces are, are not able to reach these areas. So these areas are governed by tribal lords who have their own laws. So when you have this kind of governance, you will find that there is no law prevailing in the state. Recently an ordinance was passed by the Pakistan government in which they could arrest anybody without any charge in Baluchistan. Right. So, uh, when you uh, see these kind of developments, uh, one is not surprised that uh, why Pakistan today is in the grey list of the FATF. Uh, this is one of the reasons where uh, they have not been able to uh, rein in any of the terrorist groups. The terrorist groups are being uh, given a safe haven uh, by the military. The training camps are being organized where uh, military officers are training them. Uh, when you have this kind of a system in a country, uh, can you expect uh, uh, you a semblance of law and order? And that is the reason these human rights violations are taking place today. But as you know, Major General, uh, most of the human rights violations are being carried out by the Pakistani forces, military, ISI, which has been highlighted again and again. So where, where, I mean, where will the people go? Where can the people go? But, a draw a parallel with the Indian Army. Yeah, that is why I am asking and, you. Yes, I will draw a parallel with the Indian Army in Jammu and Kashmir. Yeah. In Jammu and Kashmir, the Indian Army is also involved in maintaining the law and order in the state. When any human rights violation takes place, it is the army which uh, orders a code of inquiry. And Immediately, in case a person is found guilty, he is court-martialed. But, uh, but Major General, I, I may interrupt you here, but if you take the example of JNK, it is not an institutionalized human rights violation by the armed forces. It is maybe an aberration by some single officer, maybe doing something on his own. So, there is a difference. In Baluchistan, it is the institutionalized by the army and armed forces which are doing that human rights violation. So, there is a difference. Yes, that is a major difference, very correctly brought out, because in uh, 
when you do uh, carry out your duties okay. in a uh, very large scale uh, minor incidents do take place and that, uh, that is an aberration yes uh, but in uh, baluchistan is not the case in pakistan it's not the case right in uh, pakistan it has become a norm because there is uh, nobody to check the military right who is about the military you tell me in pakistan has the judiciary been able to contain the armed forces there no so that is the reason that kind of belligerence is there it the uh, military men there who think they are a law unto themselves they don't think they are they are yes they are the yeah, law all right <laughs> yeah so i'll i'll go to so a, a situation yeah i think mr oja wants to uh, say something on this Mr. Oja, you wanted to say something. I, I I missed a little bit, but what I would like to say that anywhere people who are given authority and power without any reasonable restraint and check, they are likely to go wrong. Two things are important. Uh, even uh, this report, this State Department report, is not entirely charitable to us. It was also caused, but the situation is drastically different because you see the larger ecosystem. Larger ecosystem is that military is supreme in Pakistan. You cannot question that trust is sacred. Right. Within military also, no one can defy dictator of a senior officer, right or wrong. It doesn't matter. As far as civilian population is concerned, especially in, in an area like uh, Balochistan or uh, wherever you, you see people are raising their voice against uh, a kind of military operation, direct or indirect operation. The plight of people is pathetic. No one is safe in those areas. So that no, I, I may interrupt you here. It is not only Balochistan. Even in Islamabad, a senior journalist few months back no. was abducted by the armed forces. Not senior. In Islamabad, you see, human rights. What large number of journalists? They have been such. Almost everyone speaks against this military. They say anywhere in the world, uh, anywhere in that country, they are likely to be targeted. They can be killed by accident. They could be in jail. Anything can happen. Right. You know, a uh, large number of uh, civil society activists. more when they talk about anything they are like targeted so military does it then uh, question comes it there is criminal justice system police is equally corrupt judiciary for all practical purposes does not exist that is also a pathetic situation so where will people go the only thing they have is to keep on competing this hatred for india and you know you can cover up everything at this uh, under this uh, excuse that they, they, they are fighting the holy war against it yeah keep left to tell it together and nobody should speak a word they can right this. so two things are there entire ecosystem is so perverted so perverted that a normal civilian life is just not possible for anyone as long as you are blowing trumpet as long as you are showing a victory as long as you are with them in their agenda and agenda is you know destination of india hatred for india everything will be taken care of but <coughs> pakistan is must be alive that who are pushed this agenda at one point of time you know this strategy needed patronage of uh, western powers to stay there they, they had to do something like this this kind of it was it uh, right now the west has become balanced the west is uh, let's be feeding india support now chinese have uh, come up as their new monsters but now people seen people in pakistan have to realize that this dictate towards india is leading to massive collateral damage for their own people and this civilian people they are indians Even Sindhis are having a problem. Pakistanis are having a problem. Punjabis are having a problem. People in Punjab are having a problem. People in Gilgit Baltistan are having a problem. Barring a small elite, Delhi, Punjab, virtually entire uh, population in Pakistan, whether it's Ahmadiyas, Shias, they are Muslim, Saudi, Puras, everybody is at receiving it. Right. And even within politics, those who are dissident, they are receiving it. So the end result is what? A failed state. A failed state with nuclear power. Nuclear power that was facilitated by rogue element in the Western nation, and now this is something a threat not only to people. Pakistan, it can come up as a global threat, an yes. uncovered territory. Yes. Everywhere, you know, see, you see there's a terror uh, attack, and the roots are traced to Pakistan. So this is human rights violation. I think is one of the major symptoms, major this thing, affecting but ungovernable Pakistan or somewhat the fragile state of Pakistan is going to pose. Far more serious threat to human rights people all over the world. Right. So, General Kocher, as we talked about, it Pakistan can be a threat to the whole world. 
So now the question comes about the international community. We see reports like Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, now US State Department keeps on giving out reports about human rights violations. But what is the international community doing about it? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, please. Now actually uh, what, what is happening is that the Pakistan state has gone into a state of isolation by the international community. The various forums, including Saudi Arabia and UAE, who were once the trusted allies of Pakistan and with whom Pakistan could go for their soft loans for nurturing its own economy, today the doors are closed to Pakistan by these countries. And why it is happening? It is happening for this very reason that Pakistan is trying to encourage terrorism and disregarding international opinion. The United States today used to be earlier an ally of Pakistan. Today, it is pressurizing Pakistan through its various international bodies, including the United Nations, to come on light. The only friends Pakistan has today is Turkey and China. And it is not far from today, as I realize, that these countries also will start acting tough with China. Right. For example, the loan which China has given to Pakistan, the terms and conditions of that loan have been kept a secret. Uh, not even in the Pakistan parliament, uh, it has been disclosed the terms and conditions of this loan. So. Uh, China is uh, like a, a Shylock today and in uh, times to come, you will uh, see that uh, Pakistan will become another opponent of China. Right. So, Mr. Oja, as you heard, uh, as uh, we talked about the international community's role. So, as uh, uh, General Kocher mentioned about Pakistan has been isolated, but is that enough? Like if you see in the case of China. I mean, U.S. has imposed sanctions against Chinese officials or for whatever they are doing in uh, Hong Kong, human rights violations, China, I mean, U.S. imposes sanctions on officials. Why not apply the same yardstick on Pakistan, impose sanctions on General Bajwa or other uh, officers who are indulging in human rights violations? Ajay ji, international relations have never been conducted with uh, that level of transparency and integrity. All international actors have been looking for their own interest, their own strategic interest, tactical interest, etc. And Pakistan has always had a ruling class going to pander to those interests of other powers at the cost of interest of their own people in return for patronage, favor, underhand deals, etc. That is the reason, as General pointed out, the terms of loan from China has not been disclosed. Because there would be a large number of individual beneficiaries, right. not people of Pakistan, not the nation Gen of General, I think General Bajwa's brother is also the biggest beneficiary. Absolutely. There is not a single this thing, military general in Pakistan, so far in its history, till date, as well as certain section of other people, you know, who are not beneficiaries of these deals. Who is not beneficiary? Ordinary people of Pakistan, they are not beneficiaries. So I feel that, you know, international community has to look into these animals. It was wrong on their part and part. They were nonchalant and they rogue sections of uh, Western intelligence agencies. They encouraged Pakistan to acquire nuclear power and then blackmail the rest of the world. And now what they have created a monster, that monster has gone into the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. Now they are also not able to speak up openly because they have a lot of things. Uh, just uh, they, they have a lot of skeletons in their cup. They will be exposed to West elements of the West are also very ambivalent. What Pakistani ruling elite has done? Extensive network in organized crime they have managed to build. Various terror groups they have managed to build. Large number of these countries, they are dependent on Pakistan for their 
count terror operations strategies. So they are little quiet. They are trying to walk also, despite knowing the fact that Pakistani ruling league has become a lackey of China. They they hit this Osama bin Laden and still best nothing. They only bombed, kept on bombing Afghanistan. The whole world knows that uh, Taliban is a proxy of Pakistan. Right. But still, you know, they needed Pakistan when they wanted to extricate uh, from this region. I feel India has to take a very bold position, not in a confrontational way, persuade the whole world, look, we need a normal state over here, a normal which is accountable for anything which is happening in this territory. And this human rights violation, people in Pakistan, ordinary people in Pakistan, they better. I hope that human rights groups in India also take up these issues, the interest of normal civilians of Pakistan, because these people are victims. They are way they are hoodwinking by creating this uh, radical networks, this organized crime network. That stuff has to be exposed because, after all, you need a fair criminal justice system where state is protecting its own citizens, its own people. But instead of that, you know, there's a serious apprehension that these uh, organized crime networks were controlling the largest chunk of the global drug trade. 84% of, I took you know, this uh, uh, opium and heroin and this uh, marijuana, all these drugs are grown in Afghanistan. And Pakistan is controlling that. So the number may be very low. This network may be very small. But the poisonous effect can be very dangerous. Right. Whether it's uh, money laundering, whether it's betting, whether it's extortion, all things are controlled by the same network which is root Pakistan. And that can impact, that can pervert our society also. It can have a spillover effect. And media cannot have a coup about. Right. We cannot discuss these things in open domain. So it is very important that a normal state is instituted. There is separation of power. There is independent judiciary, and the world is not bothered because America is bothered about its own uh, tactical interests. China is bothered about using the thing. But all said and done, that place is part of our territory. It was carved out of our identity. Yeah. So we have to. We had this larger campaign that look at national community. You are not doing enough. Whatever you are doing, it is going to impact everyone. It has already been impacting because West cannot understand this fine dynamic. You answer. We can understand it better. So right. I think we have to spearhead that initiative, Ajay Ji. Right. So General Kochar, you heard uh, Mr. Oja that India will have to spearhead because Pakistan is using its rogue status or character to blackmail the world, US and other powers to their advantage because they see their own interests. So India has to do much more, but it, then I don't think India is even doing anything. So what do you say? No, I don't agree with that because India is doing a lot. The kind of soft power we have used in the last about seven, eight years, you can see the perception of the world today as far as Pakistan is concerned. And another important aspect which we must connect with India and Pakistan is the Afghanistan issue. Afghanistan has become a big problem for Pakistan today. Not for Pakistan. Pakistan is not able to reign in the Taliban. And the US interest in Pakistan is primarily to contain Taliban and make sure that Afghanistan returns to its normal situation. But so Taliban is the proxy United of States. but Taliban is the proxy of the, uh, Pakistan, no? Yes, it is. But then there is a clash of interest involved now. No, I think Pakistan is controlling oh, yeah, Taliban. No, no, they hold meetings in Karachi. They hold. They meet foreign minister. They meet ISI chief in uh, Karachi, Islamabad. Taliban hold all consultations with Pakistani officials. That is why now the thinking in Pakistan has to change. And that is why General Bajwa is making these statements. In the uh, Islamabad security dialogue, we heard the statements made by the Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan and General Bajwa. And if you try to understand that why these statements are coming across the border? Because Pakistan has realized that its economic condition is extremely precarious today. 
and it needs the support of the other countries of the world like the united states but china alone cannot bail out pakistan and that is why these overtures are being made to india uh, which our prime minister has responded in a very very positive manner yeah and sure our diplomacy Let me tell you our yeah, general coach. We have to conclude, so maybe twenty twenty second. We have to conclude our program. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I would like to conclude by telling your viewers that Indian diplomacy is one of the best in the world today. The kind of uh, uh, back channel discussions and negotiations which take place, the Results are coming in front of us. Right, today. right. So, yeah. So, uh, we are. We hope that in Indian diplomacy is playing its part much better, so that Pakistan is put in its place. But the time of the program today is over. Thank you for both of you for participating. This is all in the agenda today. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with another important topic tomorrow. Till then, goodbye.